Now let's check out why do we need to learn how to model hypos or hypothetical components, assays, and why do we need oil characterization? So I have this little example that might happen in real life. And it's essentially, let's say that we are working in a pharma industry or pharma company, and we are going to convert X into Y. And you are modeling X and you see that it is not present in the Aspen Hysis database. So that's of course a problem. And you know, X is relatively common, but you cannot find it. Let's say it's a polymer or very, let's say common nowadays, but maybe it's not present in the database. And worst, let's say Y, which is our product, it's a new compound, totally new. It's our new, let's say, uh, product to the market and of course it's not going to be present on the Aspen Hysis database. So one could say or think that well maybe I cannot use Aspen Hysis because the components are not present and let's say we have this process in which we got X and it's mixed in the solvent we use the separator we get X and solvent separated and then we get X into this converter or let's say reactor and we get our 100% or maybe 95% yield of product. So what I want you to learn is that you can actually model these two compounds. You just need to know how to model them and we will learn some tools in which we will get to know how we can model them, how precise they are and if they can be used for let's say maybe there are some tools for X and not for Y and vice versa. So this will be an example of a hypo. Let's say gasoline, we know it's a product, we're a very common product, 92 octanes, but actually this is a mixture of plenty of hydrocarbons, as well as diesel and coal, which is a solid. So you know coal is not only carbon atoms joined together, you know there's plenty of all other materials. Or maybe we typically say natural gas, and that varies a lot because it, there are plenty of volatile. We know this is mostly methane, but if we wanted to get a substance very unique, let's say, eventually you're going to want to model your unique natural gas. So that's why we use hypos or hypothetical compounds, which can be used to model these substances. So either they are new or they are non-standardized products, but still we can work with them. So why do we need them? Well, as stated before, this is either because real life happens. Well, not all the processes, substances can be present in a database and maybe they are not 100 reliable. Let's say we're working with our, let's say, um, let's imagine we choose X. It's present in the database, but you see that in real life and you see that in the simulation, they are not the same. They have different boiling points. The freezing point is different their eccentric factor you calculated and it's not the same. You got a very, let's say, not precise phase diagram. So what you will want to do is to change individually the, these characteristics. And that will, that will be, let's say, used for a simulation and you will get better results. So whatever reason you need your hypos, you need to know how to model them, okay? So, once again, they can still be modeled. Now, why do we use assays? Because many times we will get plenty of data from laboratories or maybe from our clients or the maybe from company that sells the crude oil. Well, they will tell you, of course, they will not give you the complete data on the composition. They will just give you a distillation curve with temperatures. They will give you the average density, very generic uh, data and well, you will th think maybe that you cannot model this in Aspen Hysis, but actually you will be able to do. So once again, I'm going to bring this example on the crude oil. Typically you should know, or if you don't know, well, let's learn this, that when you got a fraction or a petroleum stream or a crude oil, typically you got some gases which are going to boil up in relatively low temperatures. Then we got the light naphthas, some are used for gasoline, others are used for other petrochemical applications. Some kerosene, some diesel maybe even, and gas oils are here present. They have higher boiling points. Some will be used for lubricants, oils, etc. 
and eventually fuel oil or bunker oil or whatever uh, heavy oils you have you can still use them and finally we got the residual material which typically is used for asphalt uh, or road tar roofing tar and so on so how can we model this if we are not given a very precise definition of what's a naphtha what's a natural gas what's a fuel oil well this is why we use assays and why do we need to characterize our oil okay typically we will need data input and as stated before typically we give the viscosity density and molar weights average data we are not given the precise 100 percent composition data and so on so this is very useful because with only two data points we will be able to model a crude oil of course the more data we add the better one would maybe think that we need paraffins or aromatics that we can still model them and of course we can and this I took this from the internet these are the typical compositions on the let's say example right here once you get some of the aromatics they will be present here 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 but the problem is guys that you will need to know all the aromatics present all the naphthenes all the paraffins some alkenes and you know there are plenty of material that they are not present still we can model them or maybe you're thinking on well maybe if, if I model this via composition but the problem is that you cannot state simply carbon in the component list you cannot state hydrogen sulfur because you know that let's say water which has hydrogen and oxygen and CO2 and CO will interact differently so we cannot simply state a composition value we need to state individual values and this is done with the oil characterization so once again you cannot simply state let's model coal and you search for coal or paraffin well that's not present you need to use the oil characterization the same is uh, true for gasoline you cannot search for gasoline here you need to state let's say gasoline 87 octanes of course will have a different composition than the 92 octane gasoline so you need to state those with the petroleum assays and the oil characterization what you, we will learn eventually is that we use pseudo components or hypo components which are present right here they have some properties they are modeled by aspen Heises, which is awesome instead of us actually modeling some substances aspen Heises will do this work for us we'll calculate critical uh, properties densities molecular weights normal boiling points and so on so hopefully you start to get the idea of why do we need to know what's a hypo how to model them and how to start working with petroleum assays and eventually use some oil characterization.